I'm Sir TapTap, and welcome to Let's Play Score Rush Extended. Uh, before I get started here, I actually want to show you off the options. This is a up to four player local co op uh, bullet hell style shooter. It has pretty good options. I really like this how to play. It's very simple. You know, we, we've got two buttons, we've got two sticks. You shoot enemies, you get power ups, you avoid the bullets. I just really like how. I mean, this stuff is simple, but it's just. Usually it seems more complicated than it really is, and people get intimidated by, you know, bullet hell shooters. And, um, I like, it even explains a bullet hell shooter. The hitbox is your little tiny dot. Uh, only the center dot is vulnerable, which is why these games are a little less crazy than they seem. And you use slow down for some more precise movement. Some simple multiplier stuff. You can, um... Like I said, you can do co-op, and uh, I don't have a co-op partner for me for this right now, so I'll just play the solo. But uh, it's nice to see that too. I find too few bullet hell games actually do co-op. Uh, Gun Deadly, can, uh, one of my favorites, has it actually, only for two players though. But yeah, and let's take a look at some of these options. So it's a bullet hell game, lots of bullets. You can change the color of the bullets if you know you want them to all be the same. And I like these color schemes. I'm just gonna leave it on multicolor. I'm just gonna leave everything on the default. But if you don't like the glow, you can set it to black or to none. Um, if you don't like the flashing, um, I'm actually gonna leave the flashing off. But you can reduce the flashing if you like, or leave it on. Um, you know, nice little. I don't think it really doesn't strobe fast enough to be. I don't think anyway. Um, to, you know, cause photosensitivity issues, but it's nice to have that option. But, uh, I like this little quote they got here. Uh, I don't entirely agree here with the whole last real classic game genre, but, um, the thing about shoot 'em ups they can be really hard, but really simple. So, as long as you have an accessible minimum difficulty level, um, you know, pretty much anyone can get in there and get going. So these are your credits, developed by Zona Games. This was originally a game on the 360. Um, it's interesting that each, the start of each mode is just, you see a huge scoreboard. I kind of like that. Uh, it just, you know, there's no extra effort to view the scoreboard. Seeing the scoreboard is just a normal part of the game. I don't usually look at scoreboards too much, but it's neat to just see it, you know. It's just there as a fact of life. Uh, review copy of this game was provided by... <sighs> okay, we're not... We're not accepting that death. Review copy of this game was provided by the developer. Um, right, so the first game was apparently on the Xbox 360. Um, there's a bunch of different versions, like there's some HTML5 versions um, of the older version. Uh, Score Rush Extended is a enhanced port, as they say. So as far as I'm aware, it has some, you know, aspects that aren't in any of the other earlier versions. A cute little visual thing that I didn't notice my first playthrough. As you shoot down enemies, um, they become those little white flamey bits on the background there. Just a nice little bit of, I don't know, consistency or whatever. So the game doesn't start out too difficult on normal mode. It's pretty accessible in my opinion. I wouldn't really call it quite easy. Um, as far as bullet hell shooters go, maybe. But um, I would just call it, you know, reasonable, accessible. There's obviously harder modes. I have, I have, I've only played one session. Uh, I got about halfway through. Yes, Parker. There's no credit feeding, which I'm up and down about credit feeding. What I like is games where you can credit feed, but you have to earn credits. I think that sates everybody because um, if you really want a credit feed, you can grind, and um, in the process of grinding, you might accidentally, you know, get good at the game and. That's happy f experience for everyone. Um, if you don't want a credit feed, you don't have to. Parker! Hold on, my cat's in the way. Parky! Smoky noises. Um, oh crap. No, Parker! This is not a good time! Can you sit down? Can you sit down? I don't, I don't know what I just knocked down, but it's all Parker's fault. What was that, Parker? What did you do? You're such a pain in the butt. Ugh. You always have to be very careful when pausing and unpausing shoot 'em ups because you can die real fast if you, you know, didn't notice a bullet that you were dodging while you paused, but then, you know. 
I can't wait to have the second floor of my house fixed up because then I can actually put Parker up there while I'm recording so he can't interrupt me. I actually don't really have doors I can close to keep Parker contained. Um, I'd have to lock him in the bathroom or something, unfortunately, because it's a very open house, at least down here. I could, I could also lock him in the laundry room with his litter box. That is like the nicest thing I can do. Actually, that door doesn't really close well, so no. My house is still kind of in partial shambles, unfortunately. Um, but it's a nice house I'm getting for cheap, and it's going to be fixed up this year, allegedly. Parker, please. Um, I forget what I was talking about when Parker interrupted me. Oh yeah, credit feeding. So yeah, I, I like, it gives, but yeah, when you unlock the ability to credit feed, it gives you that sort of progression that more modern games, you know, tend to love. And uh, I don't think it really puts it at odds with the core game because, you know, if you credit feed, you're still losing your score. So the you're still definitely punished for credit feeding. Um, and something uh, they found, you know, in the 360 era, a lot of games added credit feeding, and an unfortunate side effect of that was reviewers would just credit feed the whole game away, and they would say like, oh, this game's only 20 minutes long, and it, it's so easy, and reality is they just die constantly, but, um, they credit fed, and they didn't really, the, you know, they're not used to shoot them up, so they like, off. Oh. I was reaching for the bomb there, but I didn't. That's embarrassing. Um, yeah, Parky, but this is not a super play. This is a let's play. It's, you know, it's, what's the opposite of super? It's an, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to partially blame that on Parker because he is very helpfully constantly rubbing my leg and barking at me. Can you hear him squeak? It's a very squeaky cat. Yeah, this is just a really nice simple but effective uh, shoot him up and everything uh, is not the button I wanted to press it works but I mean I wanted to slow down I haven't been using my slowdown which is very naughty of me but oh my god that was embarrassing okay I, I was only planning to do one re or one playthrough of this but maybe I if I die here I want to get to at least like halfway through um, these have been some pretty bad deaths but I'm just out of practice I didn't do a practice run before this I probably should have um, yeah, shoot 'em ups get a bad rap, and you know what? It, it's they almost always have good difficulty settings, and there's usually an easy mode that is actually still fun when you're not very good at the game, and you can still beat it, uh, especially if you can credit feed. Um, the controls usually very simple. The complexity is usually in getting a perfect, or you know, not perfect, but a high score run. Getting a perfect run in shoot 'em ups generally not plausible um you know without a tool assisted speed run and you know th there's a lot of hidden complexity in how games score things usually but scoring doesn't matter to the casual player really so it gives you that nice cycle of okay first i'm gonna beat the game then i'm gonna beat the game on hard then i'm gonna one credit clear the game then i'm gonna do score you know it gives you this nice progression of gameplay and you don't you don't really feel like you're mis missing out on anything. At least I personally don't. I don't feel like I'm missing out by not being, you know, number one score guy because that's not really realistic for me considering how often, you know, I love shoot 'em ups, but I can't play them constantly. Um, maybe when I, you know, quit my job to become a major league shoot 'em upper. But uh, I don't really feel I'm missing anything by not um, one credit clearing or not getting a high score or whatever. Uh, I just I f focus on just beating the game, and then I decide what goals I want from there. And so, in my opinion, it's a genre. It's really it's something that's easy to pick up, and it gets a bad rap because you know, oh, lots of bullets. But really, none of these bullets have you know a snowball's chance in hell of actually hitting me. Just these ones flying directly at me, and honestly, they're really easy to dodge right now. So. Um, Bullet Hell Shooters, it's more of a zen thing, which seems weird coming from the outside. But if you actually play one, um, you just you just need this relaxed state, and you just have extreme awareness of the situation. Uh, by the way, I shouldn't en entirely waste these power-ups that drop, you know, because once my power-ups are maxed, I can uh, pick up a, a uh, thingy, 
and it'll wipe the bullets. I'm not sure if power-ups bounce when they hit the edge of the screen, though. So... Oh, also, if you touch the power-up containers before you destroy them, they will kill you. That is, That was my first death. I... I figured it might do that, so I was- it was a sample, or like, it was a trial run, so I wasn't upset. Sometimes you just gotta try things, and sometimes you're just gonna die. That's okay. Everybody dies. That's life, ironically. Oop. One thing I'm slightly confused about this in this game, the bosses seem to have these destructible parts, but best I can tell, most of them don't actually fire extra bullets when their destructive parts are, uh still intact so uh, I tried to destroy the you know the breakable bits just because it looks nice because it you know it's a little satisfying but uh, I'm not really sure if it does anything in another bullet hell game um, Hido got a Hapa destroying ship parts actually uh, extends your boss timer so that is a game where destructive stuff is very focused on Also, you're apparently invincible during screen shakes. I'm not sure if these normal screen shakes are invincible. I'm not I'm not brave enough to test. I, I, I think that means the bombs? Because I mean screen shakes when you do the bomb. Oop. So yeah, bullet hell game, it's it's mostly about looking for openings. And sometimes standing still is all you need to do to dodge a pretty imposing pattern or sometimes you just need to move very slightly to the left like if a bullet is coming dead on at you um, sometimes you just need to just duck very slightly over and you'll be perfectly fine and sometimes moving too fast will actually get you killed because a moving target in a bullet hell game is a lot easier to get hit because there's you know there's crap everywhere but if you just oof I thought that was me for a second. I I wasn't sure if I dodged that. I was trying to dodge that. Mad. Mutually, was that mutually assured destruction? Did I defeat it while getting hit or something? I'm not sure. One thing I'm a little confused about, I don't know how many lives I have. Um, I don't think my bombs are my lives. I can see my bomb counter. I've got two. So I'm slightly confused in that regard. I don't really focus too much on my lives. I try not to focus on anything but, you know, bullets. And to a lesser extent, shooting. That's one thing about the name Shoot'em Up. At least, um, at this level, it's more, it's much more of a dodge'em up. You know, the shooting is almost incidental. You know, I'm just aiming vaguely in the direction of things. You know, dodging is the important part. Yeah, this feels really nice, and um, I would say it's decently beginner friendly. It's not the easiest bullet hell in the game in the world, um, but if you get if you only have a PS4 and you want to try to shoot them up, I would say try this. Um, there's Rezo Gun too. It's not, you know, it's a Defender clone. It's not really quite the same as this. It's still a great game, um, but uh, Defender clones are sort of in their own genre within shoot 'em ups. And bullet hell is sort of a very different thing. Um, if you're new to shoot 'em ups or bullet hells in general, I would say one of the best things you can try is um, Bullet Heaven 2 by Koopa Games. Um, I actually got a bunch of videos on that. Um, you can play the free Flash version that is very full featured. Um, has controller support. You can run on pretty much any PC. You know, it's a Flash game. Um, there's a Steam version that runs less, you know, it doesn't have that flash game performance, but uh, if you're a cheapskate or just want to try it out, you can play that, and it'll give you a good sample of uh, how well you can do it. And it's easy mode, or normal mode, is uh, pretty good. Um, they're pretty accessible, rather. Yeah, I got a 1-up. I don't... Yeah, my 1-up meter is not my... Bomb. I have no idea where my one-ups are. Oh, it's it's over at the left. I couldn't see my one-ups because I was on my last life. That I should have guessed that, but I didn't. <laughs> I also like that you apparently have infinite options. If you're new to shoot 'em ups, the little dudes that trail on you, um, those are called options. The little satellites. 
<laughs> it's pretty neat that you have infinite options, actually. Or possibly partially infinite options. Maybe it cuts you off eventually, but uh, we've got a lot. I I'm nervous about all of the th power-ups that's thrown at me. That usually means something bad. At least, if this were Doom, I guess this isn't Doom. But I mean, usually a bad sign. It's very insistent on giving me lots of stuff. I guess there is lots of crap coming on the screen, but it's not very difficult right now. Yeah, this is pretty... I would say this is decently accessible. Uh, if you... If you're curious... I want to try this, or like I said, Bullet Heaven, as you know. It's nice... I always recommend Bullet Heaven, because, I mean, it's free. You can't... You can't get any... Um, easier to try than that. It's accessible at every level. It's free. It's got controller support. It's got mouse controls. It's got keyboard controls. Um, it's a well-designed game to begin with. It has cheats that let you uh, play easier. Um, you know, even easier than the easy mode. It has handicaps for people that want, you know, it It reaches every level of skill. It's just a great game to start with. Or, you know, if you really like them too. Also, I guess it's implied considering how I showed off the uh, options, but I really like to thank the developer for putting in all of those options and uh, especially the flashing and stuff. Um, I try to turn those stuff like that on. Like, well, I'd like to leave options default generally. Uh oh. But like, if I can reduce flicker without you know majorly impacting graphics, I'll do that. Just you know, so nobody has issues watching the video. Uh oh. So my score is pretty big, I guess. I just noticed that. I think my last run died like I think it was like forty thousand or forty million rather. Forty thousand would be pretty sad. That's like one enemy. Um, so this seems to be a pretty big boss. It's taken a while to die anyway. It's not too intense, but. Uh, Bullet hell, apparently. This is usually a chivo for um, whenever there's like a ton of crap on the screen. You get, you gotta have your tons of crap on the screen uh, achievement. Was that the end? That was the end, apparently. Well, that's normal mode anyway. Uh, dodged. Oh, cool. It does have a grazing mechanic then. I usually don't bother. Learn. There's some games where grazing is very important, um, especially score-wise, but sometimes just surviving. Like, there's some games where you can uh, graze. Um, if you graze enough, the bullets, the screen will clear, and free screen clears can be very important, or super wasted. You know, it, it really depends on the situation. I'll just show you some advanced here, or expert, or whatever the mode was called. I didn't really pay attention. Um... I'll just keep going until I get a game over, I guess. I wasn't planning to show tons and tons of this, but uh, we get the point here. Uh, I have been planning to show more shoot 'em ups. I, I was meaning to do some more, like, I want to stream um, shoot 'em ups, because I mean, I, I just get confidence issues. I, I, if I'm only going to show, like, one run of a game, I want it to be a really good one, but then I got to practice a lot, and that's not really. Or if I, you know, get bad luck and die or something, um, then I waste commentary and it's like, no, I don't want to do that, I should just stream. But uh, this seemed a bit easy, at least for my taste, at least on the normal mode, so I thought I could show it off. I'm not saying easy in a bad way, like, the lowest difficulty in a shoot 'em up game should be easy to me. If it's not easy to me, you know, as a good shoot 'em up player, um, you've probably majorly failed accessibility-wise, because, you know, anybody who just wants to play and, you know, isn't super good at them will, you know, get really frustrated, and that kind of sucks. And like I was sort of saying earlier, there, there's actually a lot of accessibility in shoot 'em ups and it's very underrated, because, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff moving on screen, you know, they're not easy, 
But, um... It's also very straightforward, and it's all skill-based. It's not... There's very little... Until scoring is considered. There's very little um, depth of knowledge required. Now, of course, if your reflexes are absolute garbage, or your hand-eye coordination is really bad, I mean, yeah, it's not necessarily accessible in that sort of way. Though, um, the stuff you can do, like, you can slow, um, you can offer accessibility options like slow time and stuff. Um, I don't really have a problem with, actually, I, I prefer when games have stuff like that. I don't use them myself, usually, but, um, hey, more people playing games and more people enjoying themselves. That's, that is what's good. And an underrated thing about um, accessibility options, I was thinking about this while I was um, checking out the accessibility options in um, Defender's Quest uh, Valley of the Forgotten. Um, that game has... Oh, I knew I was going to get a hit and I didn't press bomb. That always happens. That always happens. I always see it, but I don't, I don't press the button. I would say that is my biggest problem. The th biggest thing that I need to learn in Blood Hell games is just press the bomb button. Tap, tap. Just press it. Um, and yeah, and for reference, this game does not reward you for bombing. This is one of those games where bombing is only, you know, a panic clear. It doesn't penalize you like Bullet Heaven does. Uh, Bullet Heaven 2, specifically, anyway. Uh, but uh, it's not a thing where you want to save your bomb for, you know, just to clear a bunch of bullets for points. The bombs are actually just to extend your life. Also, I think we get bombs back when we die, so I feel really dumb when I lose a uh, thing. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, accessibility options. So, Defender's Quest uh, Valley of the Forgotten has... Uh, I saw it. I saw it. Um, it has the ability to... You can increase that... Uh, you can decrease the health of enemies. You can slow down time. But you can also increase the speed or increase the, the health of the enemies. And that made me realize, when you're implementing difficulty options, or like, accessibility options like that, it generally, it actually gives you hooks that allow you to make the game harder, too. And that's kind of, that, that's just a plus for everyone. That's, that adds accessibility to every level, you know? You can add even more of a challenge than was originally intended. And it's all up to the player to implement, so, you know, people can't really complain too much that, oh, you know, it's too hard if you put the enemy health at 200% and 500% faster. Well, if it's too hard, just play it normal, you know? But, uh... Yeah, some people get grumpy when there's invincibility modes and stuff in games. Don't... Don't be like that. Let people have fun. It's, um... I don't like when developers spend tons of time, like, making a game... Like, I don't like when the core of a game is affected negatively for accessibility reasons. Like, you should... When you think accessibility, you should think at every level, not just, like, the bottom. Like, Uncharted 4 has some of the best accessibility options in the business, more or less, honestly. Oh, especially in the AAA business. But, um, you play the core game, you would not know that the accessibility options are even there. It, it doesn't sacrifice anything. Huh, 24, seriously? I guess not many people play expert. Um... See how godlike is locked. Um, I'm gonna. I have a few more words to say, so I'm just gonna show a little bit. Um, but yeah, you you can leave the core of your game like perfectly intact quite often, and you add accessibility stuff on that you know. Players that complain about invincibility mode in Star Fox, um, it turns out they would never actually see the invincibility mode offer because you know it's not even in normal options in Star Fox Zero. You have to die a lot to get offered invincibility mode. So if you know you're if you're elite gamer and you hate people that want invincibility mode, you're never gonna see it because you you just won't die and it's not for you. That's fine. Not everything has to be for you. And I mean, the core game doesn't suffer for it. And there's definitely some situations like you know streamlining. You know, a lot of people complain about Halo, um, you know, doing Call of Duty style stuff. I actually haven't played Halo since they stopped putting them on, on PC, so I can't comment on that. But I mean, affecting the core gameplay mechanics negatively, you know, so more people will play it, that is not good. But um, adding more options, that is something that's always good. Um, 
Anyway, I think I talked more about accessibility than I talked about this game, but it is a good game and I enjoy it. I just... I don't know, I'm busy enjoying the game and I, I don't... I don't think much about it, I guess. Yeah, when you play bullet hell games, you just get in this zen-like trance. It may look tense and frustrating, but it's actually really calm and relaxing. You know, not if you're constantly dying, but once you get at a certain level, you know, you're not worried anymore. You may not be totally godlike, but you're alright, and if you die, it's really not a big deal. You'll start again. The game isn't very long, so no matter how far you are when you die, you know, maybe you lose, like, 10 minutes to 20 minutes tops, usually. You know, maybe an hour in some of the longest ones, but that's that's pretty intense. Uh, usually not that long. Uh, not if you're, like, good and don't die, anyway. But uh, that doesn't mean you're done after an hour, you know. You know, sometimes people play games for fun instead of, you know, wanting to get to the end. Yeah, that's pretty much... I'm just gonna use my bombs so I don't forget again. So yeah, use bombs, kids. Not not like real-world bombs, that would be bad, but I mean... And shoot 'em ups Don't forget your bombs. That, that's bad, too. Wait, let me just confirm. Do you get your things back, your bombs back, when you die? Oh, you don't. Alright. I guess... Huh. I could swear I got bombs back at some point, but maybe... Hmm. Maybe there's certain checkpoints where you get bombs back. I'm just gonna beat this boss, and then um, then I'll let you go. Then we'll end the video. I just got really nervous when I said that, and I looked over to make sure I was recording. I've done that once before. Everything that can go wrong in recording will go wrong. Okay, so yeah, that is Score Rush Extended. It's PlayStation 4 only, at least for now. I didn't note any plans to release it elsewhere. There's other score rushes for other platforms on... I'll link you their website. But this is the latest and greatest. It's on PS4. I think it's... Um, let me... Let me check. I want to say the price, but I'm not... Okay, it is $12. I was about to say 10 The other versions are 5 bucks, I guess. The, you know... Simpler things. Its claim to fame is number one in Japan, apparently. Um, oh! The first game scored number one in Japan for Xbox Live, um, Xbox Live Indie Games, I guess. Rest in peace, Xbox Live Indie Games. Sort of. It had it had ups and downs. Anyway, this is Scorash Extended. Thanks for watching.